Okay, welcome back to Shakespeare Walkthrough, a close reading of Macbeth for better essays and class discussions by me, Rod Robertson. Um, today we're going to start Act 3. And just to recap briefly, uh, at the end of Act 2, Duncan was found murdered. The two sons, Duncan's sons, took off to England and Ireland. And these old guys, Ross and, and, and an old man, witnessed horses eating each other. Um, the, the wasteland has come to Scotland and somebody's got to put it to rights. And we don't know who that's going to be yet. Okay, so could it be Banquo? It could be Banquo because we've, we've, we've already determined that he's a pretty decent guy. So it could be him. It's not, by the way, but it could be. Uh, it opens. They're still in the palace. Uh, at Macbeth's place, this is where they are, and Banquo is a uh, forest. Is not Macbeth's place. That's that's some sorry. That's the king's palace. So Macbeth is the king. Yeah. So it's his palace now. Um, he's alone. Now you know what he's thinking. You know what he's thinking. He's thinking, Macbeth, dude, what did you do? That's what he's thinking, and he says it right here. It's an apostrophe. Remember apostrophe? It's the when you're talking to somebody or something that can't hear you. Thou hast it now, King Cawdor gloms all as the weird sisters promised. And I fear thou played most foully for it. So, no surprise, he suspects that that um, Macbeth did the dirty deed. Uh, weird, by the way, the weird sisters, the weird women. Weird originally means uh, W-Y-R-D. That's the way it used to be spelled, and it used to be uh, fateful. It means fate. The the original, the origins of the word, the cognate, is the is the word we use for these. Uh, the word's origins. It meant. Um, fate, so these fateful women, because they were in the Greek tradition, they were the three fates, um, and they would spin, they would live in these creepy women in this cage, witches, basically, and they were spinning out the yarn. That was one of women's jobs back in the old, old days. Men would go out and kill things, and women would stay home and take care of stuff at home, and one of the things you do at night is spin the yarn while people tell stories and sing and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so these weird sisters are spinning the thread of fate. And that's, that's exactly what these uh, weird sisters are doing. I should have mentioned that in the beginning, I suppose. Anyway, okay, so um, Banquo is suspicious. F and he played most foully. For, he's, 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 he's afraid that his friend has done this. He's pretty sure he has. But look what he does in true Banquo form. Yet it was said, it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. But the witch is also said... Now, he's fallen into Macbeth's trap here, too, of, oh, wow, maybe the witches are saying something true, even though he s tried to slap Macbeth down for that earlier. So he says, well, your posterity ain't going to work. You're not going to have any children in, you know, to take over the, the kingship. I will. I will be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, as sorry, if there come truth from them, so if if the truth coming from the witches, which they've already demonstrated it comes true, the exact same trap, if the exact same trap, Banquo's falling into it. This is interesting. Why, by the verities, by the truths made uh, on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well and set me up in hope? The exact same trap. So this is really interesting. I mean, uh, in different circumstances, it's almost like Shakespeare is teasing us here. We've seen three times where Banquo has been tempted but resists, tempted, resists, and here he resists. He says, but hush no more. He resists here as well. It, but So you write your essay and you say Banquo is the better character. That's, that's what I believe to be true. But it's also very useful when you're reading complex literature, real literature, poems and complex short stories, is to, to figure out what you believe to be true about the work. What is the author trying to say about A or B or character type A or this per kind of person? Uh, formulate your argument, write your essay, say, yeah, this is true. Find your evidence. That's what we did for Banco. We found our evidence. Evidence. As you're doing that, uh, set yourself up with a steel man, not a straw man. Don't just say, oh, yeah, Bank was a nice guy because he doesn't kill Duncan. That, that's a straw man argument. We, it's, it, it, it's, it's easily punctured if you dig deep enough. And here we are. We've just dug deep enough. We're questioning it now. Well, wait a minute here. Here he's, he's falling into the same trap. How could he do this? Because he's human too. So you swap out the two characters. You give Banquo no kids. You give Banquo... A, 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 a devouring mother figure for a wife. You give Banquo some of those insecurities and they might not be so far off uh, um, at all. 
I don't think that's ultimately the truth, but it's, it's worth considering because then you can use that as your counter argument in, in, your, in your essays. Um, it's easy to be a good guy when you got the world on your shoulders. No, not on your shoulders. When you've got the world at your back, it's a, it's it's easy to be a good guy when you're bankable because life is going fairly well for you. You've got you've got things going. Back in those days, to have a son and to be established and to be loved by the king, that was to have everything. Macbeth doesn't. He doesn't have the son, and I suspect, and he's got a nasty wife, and I suspect he's had a nasty mother and some other, you know, DNA. You know, the DNA, the more insecure. What is it? Um, high in negative emotion. He could he could be more neurotic than Banquo. So all these things. It's easy to be happy when you're happy. Uh, okay. So Banquo was there. He says this. We get some more. He's he's tempted, but he has the strength of character to resist again. But tempted. Keep it in mind. Uh, then enter the whole gang. Now this is it's kind of a party scene. They're getting not that it's not the party scene, but they're getting ready for it. They see everybody's there. They say, yeah, yeah, we got a new king, we got a new era. Welcome the new era. Got to put the past in the past. Let's try to move forward. So there's all of this kind of positive uh, emotion going around. Lady Macbeth is there. Macbeth is king, as queen, and then of course good old Lennox and Ross hanging around. Macbeth says, here's our chief guest. Banquo is the guy that sticks out in, in Macbeth's mind for good reason, as he'll lay out here shortly. Uh, Lady Macbeth says, we can't forget this guy. He's our chief. There'll be a gap in our great feast, so they're announcing a banquet tonight. It's, it's the morning, and tonight at 7 o'clock, there's going to be a big feast. Tonight, we hold a solemn supper, sir, and we want you to be there. We, 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 I'll request your presence. He plays the dutiful subject, and he says, of course, my duties are tied to you forever. They're knitted to you forever, so he's the dutiful subject. Uh, probably kind of fake, obviously fake, because he just he suspects Macbeth of being a murderer. Ride you this afternoon. Are you going for a ride today? And he says, yes, I'm going for a ride. That was a sport that they did. I don't think he's, I don't think he's going on a mission or anything. He's just, it's, it's, it's what they did for fun. Uh, we should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been both grave and prosperous. So, oh, it's too bad you're going today. I would have liked to t chat with you today about some policy making, about some politics stuff, because your good advice is always valued in this day's council. But we'll do that tomorrow, no problem. Are you going far? Is it far you ride? I, my lord, I'm going to be gone all day, as we'll fill up the time twixt this and supper. So I'm going all the way from now till supper. If my horse go not my horse, the better I must be a bore of the night for a couple of hours. So I might even be after dark, which is not a, always a wise thing to do, but I might be back like maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock or whatever, or whatever. Fail not our feast. No, I won't, my lord, I will not. Now here we get into some of the plot stuff. Macbeth uh, makes it known that word is starting to spread of the coup d'etat in Scotland, uh, and we hear our bloody cousins, so that's McDon uh, Donald Bain, sorry, Donald Bain and Malcolm. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide. So Macbeth is sticking to that line. Filling their hearers with strange inventions. So the two princes are telling everyone strange inventions, which of course are that, you know what, Macbeth has, has murdered good King Duncan, we have to do something. So it's actually true. This is a little plot echo, and it's a foreshadowing of what's going to happen later on, because I think I explained at the beginning that uh, uh, Malcolm goes down to England, and he gets he recruits some troops, and he goes back up to Scotland. So that's a, that's a, an, a, that's a reason for Macbeth to be worried, and for us to be hopeful as, as, an, as, as audience members. Um, but of that tomorrow, we'll talk about that later. Bah, 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 get you to horse, go have fun. And look what he says here, goes Fleance with you. And if you watch the film version, it's like Banquel freezes when Macbeth says this, and for good reason. I, my good Lord, our time does call upon us. We're late, we got to go. And then he says, all smiles, you know, there are... There are daggers and men smile. So Macbeth says, okay, we wish you a happy trip. Then he announces to everybody, Bank was gone, and he announces to everybody, okay, everyone, you do what you want. Be master of your time until 7 tonight. So take care. Do what you want. I'll see you at 7. Now, this is interesting, too, and I'm going to, again, I rely so heavily on that 1979 version, but it's so it's so brilliant. Um, he's he, he's, he says to everyone here, to make society the sweeter welcome, 
we will keep ourselves alone until supper time. So to make my to help me enjoy to make me enjoy your company later, I want to be alone now. So then I'll get bored with my own company and I'll enjoy your company. Lord Byron once said really wonderfully, it's this great quote for introverts. If you're an introvert, he said, uh, "I go out to get me an appetite for being alone." So he's you go out to a party because then you get sick of parties and you just want to and you enjoy your own company more. Anyway, this is a version of that. Uh, anyway, okay. So, but in 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 the the the, d- the director of that 1979 version, what, sh- what they had Lady Macbeth do is that she was all, okay, all the guys are going to be gone and I can be alone with my husband for a few moments because we haven't seen Lady Macbeth in very much here. So she wants to be with Macbeth, but then he turns to her or he turns away from her and he very cruelly just says, alone, meaning he doesn't want any company at all because he's got some nasty business to do. So that to me suggests uh, that at least the directors of, the, of, the, of that particular film were thinking of, of the... Of the of increasing the evidence of the alienation and the isolation of the the Horcruxes. Remember the, the Lord Voldemort who dehumanizes himself one by one and he cuts himself off from the love and grace of, of good people. Uh, okay, so everyone's gone, including Lady Macbeth, which would be all kind of weird, right? So why would you be alone? But anyway, he's got some nasty business to talk about. He says, attend those men our pleasure. Are those men waiting for me? So he's, what has happened is that he's invited some murderers uh, to come in to, and he's going to hire them to go kill Banquo and Fleance. Yes, my lord, they're waiting outside the gate. Bring them in. Now, oh, your third soliloquy. So wake up, ladies and gentlemen. you got to pay attention to this. The third soliloquy, and again, if I'm not mistaken, it comes right after he meets Banquo. You see, Banquo is the trigger because Banquo is able to cane. Uh, I talked briefly about this. I'm going to expand on it a little bit more. And remember, uh, Cain is the is the weaker brother. Abel is the stronger brother, the more competent brother, the more accomplished brother, the better man. And that better manness creates resentment and um, and and uh, and bitterness in the weaker in in the lesser man. And so what happens is that uh, Cain ends up killing Abel. It's the first, it's in the biblical tradition, in the, in the Christian tradition, it's the first, uh, the first murder of humankind because Cain and, Cain, was the, Cain and Abel were the sons of uh, uh, Adam and Eve, I believe. I, 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 know, I only know the basics, but, but it, it's, 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 a, it's a great story and it explains this. But, uh, Macbeth is actually, a, it's, it's basically this kind of uh, story. It's a Cain and Abel story. So Macbeth recognizes and, inju- and is judged by the mere presence of, of Bank- Banquo's superior nature. Now, as you'll see all throughout this, this is all about Banquo. He's railing about Banquo. It brings in, of course, the manhood theme uh, because Banquo is the real man because he has a, a son. Macbeth is not. Mac- Banquo is also the real man because he has greater strength of character and Macbeth knows it. He senses it. And so Banquo doesn't even have to say anything. It's just the fact that Banquo exists gnaws at, at, at Macbeth and he wants to destroy it. Well, just to prove the manhood theme, th- this puts the nail in the coffin of the manhood theme, by the way. Uh, it's just on and on. He's just obsessed with his, with, with, with siring male heirs. Line of kings, fruit. He, Macbeth has a fruitless crown, a barren scepter. Except barren means you don't have any children. So his, the, the, the scepter of the kingship has no son to go with it. Unlineal hand, it's not my line, it's no son of mine. Banquo's issue, the thing that comes from Banquo, which is his son, for Banquo's sons, for them, only for them have I killed Duncan to make them kings. The seed of Banquo kings, it gets a little bit gross there, but that, that, that's, that's it. That, that, yeah, there's, there it is. It's the man of the you've, Henry VIII. Look up King Henry VIII. He was willing to kill wives and divorce them and change the whole course of English history for the sake of having male heirs. So that's, that's what the... Today we call it toxic ma- masculinity. It's a bit of a tired phrase, uh, but, you know, it's, you know in, in certain individuals, it's certainly the case. All right, so we've got to go line by line. You already know a little bit about it, but here we go. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. So he's alone now. And he says, to be king is nothing unless I'm safely king. So also the theme, of course, the, ty- the paranoia of the tyrant. Look at history. You get, to the, you get to the top by stabbing someone in the back. You spend the rest of your time on the throne looking over your shoulder, waiting for the 
someone to stab you in the back because apparently you understand very clearly that apparently that's the way you get power. So you're just waiting for somebody to kill you. So in order to prevent that, you kill everybody around you. Look at look at history. Look at look at Stalin in the Soviet Union. He just the purges, Stalin's purges. He just he knew what it took to get to the top, and he was waiting for some other punk to come up and try to do it to him. So he 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 got proactive and he just killed everybody around him. I I know very little about that, but but I know that. So but look it up. Um, our fears uh, in Banquo stick deep. Yeah, you're right, they do, because Banquo is the better man. You are the Cain, Banquo is the Abel, and you know it, and it drives you crazy. And in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. It's not even so much the knife in the back. It really, really isn't. It's the fact that he's royal of nature, that Macbeth knows that he's the lesser, weaker, more pathetic man, and it just he can't stomach it. Um, so he mentions three things about Banquo here. One, that he's brave. Two, more importantly, perhaps, that is because Macbeth is brave, just as brave, probably m- more brave because he's more honored uh, than Banquo for his deeds. But here's the kicker. He's wiser. Uh, and also similarly ambitious. That's the big question that we half answered up top. Maybe not identically a- ambitious, but similarly ambitious for sure. Okay, so... Uh, "'Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety." So he's a lot smarter than Macbeth. He has the cool hand, a cooler hand than Macbeth. Macbeth is foolish, and he, and he acts in a foolish way, and Macbeth seems to know it here. So Banquo dares to do a lot. He dares much, and into his fearless frame of mind, temper of mind, uh, he he's wise enough to let his uh, wisdom guide his actions and to act in safety. There is none, there is none but he whose being I do fear. So there's nobody else that I'm afraid of. Well, that's going to shift, of course, because he gets rid of Banquo and the next guy comes up and he'll say the exact same thing about the next guy. So there's the Stalin effect. And under him, my genius is rebuked, as it is said, Mark Antony's was by Caesar. So, so a similar thing, this whole Stalin thing appeared. There you go, in ancient Rome. We, don't, we can even go back further than, than the Soviet Union, which was about 100 years ago. Um, yeah, so the same kind of thing. Mark Ant- Caesar was the king. Caesar means king. So Caesar was the king, Julius Caesar. And Mark Antony was the better man, and he won the day. So Macbeth is worried about that. Banquo chid the sisters. So now we get into projection territory where you remember back in this when they met the Wis- the weird sisters and Banquo said hey you spoke to Macbeth and he's freaking out over there how about me do you have any good news for me so Macbeth remembers that he noticed that and so what happens here is the projection uh, what we have inside of us we project outwardly if we have goodness in us we tend to see good which is dangerous because then you can be naive and stupid and you think everybody's good and they're not all good of course um but if you're corrupt inside, then you see corruption in everybody else, and that's equally bad, maybe even worse. Uh, we see what we expect to see, what we want to see, what the way our the way we are aligned in the world. If we are aligned to to, to negativity, we see negativity everywhere. Uh, Macbeth sees his own corrupt ambition in Macbeth's in Banquo's questions, but he's not entirely wrong, is he? He's not entirely wrong. So there's the kicker. Shakespeare never leads leaves us alone. He always says, "Yeah, you know that this is true. I've just shown you that's true, and you it makes sense to you, so you believe it." But there's also this, and he throws in all these these curveballs that make us. It ruins our essays. Because we write an argument and we think it's solid and then we read another line and we say, oh, wait a minute, that kind of contradicts what I just said. So what do you do with your essay? Do you throw it away? No, you don't. You put it in as a counter argument, as kind of a, a, a caveat. Um, you, you throw it in and say, yes, there's a little bit of yes, but that you can include in here because you're talking about human beings and you're talking about the, 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 the most brilliant, penetrating, complex uh, um, depiction of what it means to be human when you're reading Shakespeare. People like Shakespeare. He wasn't the only one that did it, but he might have been one of the best. Definitely one of the best. Uh, okay, so Banquo asked the sisters uh, to tell him some good news. Then, prophet-like, the sisters hailed him the line of kings. So now he's, there's some recap. Here's some sausage-making, some Hermione Granger plot summary for people who've wandered off and, off and thought about their sick cow at home or whatever. And now they're being pulled back in and reminded what happened. There's people coming late and stuff like that. Okay. They hailed him father of a line of kings, and upon my head they placed a fruitless crown. 
it's just a crown and it's going to die with me. There's no fruit to allow the next generation to come up. And put a barren scepter in my grip. Barren means barren is for the woman. If a woman is barren, that means she can't have children. There's a rebuke of Lady Macbeth, but he never rebukes her. No, sir. Thence to be wrenched by an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. So I've got the scepter of the, of the kingship, but it's going to be taken away from me by an unlineal hand, not my own line. If it be so, if that's the case, then for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind, have I soiled my mind, have I polluted my mind for Banquo's kids, for them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. I've put rancors in the vessel of my peace. I've poisoned my own peace only for them. And mine, e mine eternal jewel, my soul, I have given to the common enemy of man, the devil, to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. Ugh, bitter, bitter. And watch a good actor do this. Watch Ian McKellen do this. Wow, just it's, it, it, it's just rotting his brain. Well, look what happens. Um, well, before I go there, I just want to talk about this a little bit. Um, yeah, so there's a manhood, fine. We've already talked about that. Strong moral sense. This this is true too. I look at this. The, the words "gracious Duncan." I can't. I can't not. I can't ignore that word. Shakespeare didn't have to use that word. I I, may, I might have mentioned earlier a trick that I use with my students. Uh, the why a why not b trick. When you do an analysis, you, you look at every line and say why 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 is it gracious and why doesn't it just say Duncan? Why is it gracious and and just not good? Um, th there's a reason for it. Gracious is it's a lovely word. It's a tender word. It, it's it's a it's a holy word. It's a word associated with the grace of God, uh, and it, so it, it tells me that th that is first and foremost in Macbeth's mind when he's thinking of Duncan, and and he knows what he's done. He's, he really knows what he's done. He knows he's aligned himself to the devil, and he's not that kind of guy. So to go back to the what we've talked about many times, uh, the wrong person for the job. He's not the sociopath he would like to be. Uh, no, he wouldn't like to be. Um, I don't know, he screws himself up. Okay, so what do these guys do? What do, what, what do, these, what do these weak cane guys do when they're pushed to the wall? Rather than let that happen, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. So he says, I don't, I mean, he throws caution to the wind. He says, okay, screw it all. Nihilism. There's, we got some more nihilism stuff coming up here, but we'll talk about that. Ni this is a nihilistic play. I think I might have mentioned it before, uh, but it's a nasty nihilism. By the way, is the, probably the worst of all mental states you can have. It's just it's so destructive of the self and and of those around you. So beware of it. Rather than that, come fate into the list. He throws caution to the wind and champion him into the utterance. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to prevent Banquo's sons from becoming kings. Who's there? So here it is, the tyrant's willingness to destroy the world to support his own ego. It's Stalin, Hitler, I don't know, Kim Jong-un, whoever. Just close your eyes and pick a tyrant. Um, okay, so the two murderers come in, and he has a meeting with the two murderers, which is a, kind of a weird meeting, by the way. It's uh, I find it kind of odd. He Look at all this explanation. you got two murderers come in, and Macbeth has to give him a simple job. You know Banquo, right? Yes, sir. Go kill him. You know what Banquo's son looks like? No. We'll find out and kill the son too. If you were a self-confident king with no checks and balances on your power, you just snap your fingers and stuff happens. Well, he goes into these long, long speeches. Look at them all. He goes into all these long speeches trying to prove something, try to explain this stuff to the murderers. It, it's crazy. It's really, and it's actually kind of irritating because the plot is dead now because we're waiting for the action to go on. But he goes on and on and on. So again, I asked the question, why A, why not B? Why does Shakespeare do this and not do this? And one of the reasons I came up with was um, there's a little bit of thematic stuff that it gets revealed that's actually very, very, very important. But he could have done it much more if, uh, economically. Uh, the root of the cause, root cause of evil here, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, I think it's the, um, I think it's partly this. Uh, Macbeth is insecure, and an insecure person feels he has to justify himself. If you if you if you're a swaggering, you know, top alpha guy or woman, you don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You don't have to explain yourself to anybody. You just do it. So these insecure people, it's strange that Macbeth, the king, feels the need to explain explain his actions to the murderers. He's trying to convince himself that Banquo deserves to die. So this is the other thing. So there's this the 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 insecurity thing, but also look at this. 
We lie better if we can convince ourselves of the lies. It is true. So he goes out of his way here to convince these murderers that Banquo did something bad to them so that they deserve to die. So perhaps there's a little bit of that in there, that, Banquo, that Macbeth is trying to convince himself that Banquo deserves to die. Um, th that's a little bit of a weak argument, but, but I don't know. You, you figure out something else and you, you let me know in the comments. Okay, so they all sit down, the three of them, two murderers and Macbeth, and he says, well now, have you considered my speeches? Did you hear what I said? Do you remember what I said before? Have you thought about what I told you last time? Know that it was he in times past that held you under such fortune. So what he's saying is that I told you last week or whatever that Macbeth, uh, that, uh, that, that Banquo was the guy that screwed up your life, that caused you to go to jail, I'm assuming, because they're murderers or whatever, which you thought had been me. So you thought that I'm the one who put you in jail. You, you, think, you thought that I was the one that ruined your life, but it was actually Macbeth. Uh, it, it was actually Banquo. Even an idiot, he says, would understand that it's Banquo. So he's being a little bit rude there. Yeah, sir, yeah, you, you, you told us that. You made it known to us. I did, and I went further, and this is our second meeting. Do you find it, do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? So you were wronged. Your life was ruined by this guy, and are you going to sit by and let this happen? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, da, 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 for his son, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever. So he's basically saying the old Marty McFly, that's, that's the guy's name from Back to the Future, uh, when the bully guy says, what are you, chicken? Well, a weak man is going to step up to that and say, nobody calls me chicken. So he's basically playing that stupid game, which Macbeth would fall, has fallen victim to as well when, when his wife said it. What are you, a man? What are you, a chicken? And Macbeth stands up and says, nobody calls me chicken. So they say this, nobody calls us chicken. We are men, my liege. Men won't sit down and let somebody ruin their life. Now the word man triggers Macbeth, and he goes off on this long tirade about what it means to be a man. Again, how many times do we have to hear this? Uh, manhood, strange rant about categories of men. Macbeth's obsession with his ranking in the categories of manhood as determined by Lady Macbeth. And we've already seen that Shakespeare is dealing with different... Um, definitions of what it means to be a man and Lady Macbeth is the one that has won over Macbeth uh, the one where it's all pure brute strength rather than uh, marriage of, of, of good and strength so he goes off on this long rant he says yeah sure in the species in the catalog you go for men just like all these types of dogs are, are all clapped up by the name of dogs but in the category of dogs as with men there's as with men, there's different types of dogs and different types of men. So some are better than others. Some are different than others. So it's that obsession with his, his own ranking. He's for his entire life, I believe, for, Be for Macbeth's entire life, he's felt like the little man. He's felt like the, 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 the runt of the litter, uh, the guy that was the underdog. He's always felt like the last in the rank of men. He's always been looking up at you know, at these other people that he admired so much. And he feels small and he feels weak. And here's, do you see how I'm describing this? I have pity on him because, because you have to. You don't, you don't forgive, you don't necessarily have to forgive the horrors that they commit on other people, but you have to look at them as human beings and try to, try to find some way to, to, to handle it. I don't know. And so of men. Now, if you have a station in the ranks, not if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhoods, tell me, and I'll give you a job which will allow you to to take revenge on this guy who ruined your life. So there you go. If he he's, he says, if you're not the 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 lowliest of men, tell me, and we'll we'll man up together and we'll take care of this business. Because let me just I don't want to go line by line with this, but he says because uh, uh, Banco is is. Uh, a threat. He's a, he's a direct threat to me and my life. Now, this is interesting. Here we go. Again, what do you do with your sim sympathy? What do you do with your sympathy for awful people? I don't know what to do with it. You can't just let murderers walk around free. What do you do? It's, it's an age-old question. Here's what this guy says. He says, I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. Reckless. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune that I would set 
my lie on any chance to mend my life or be rid of it. There it is. Again, why A, why not B? Why is Shakespeare wasting his time with these stupid murderers when he could have just snapped his fingers and killed Banquo? Because Shakespeare understands the human condition and he has sympathy for all ranks of men and women. There's terrible, terrible sympathy coming for Lady Macbeth. You wait. Um, and, 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 and I don't think Shakespeare knows what to do with it either. I don't think he knows what to do with it. Uh, he, and he's, he's not making any comment on it. He's just saying this is what people are like. Society, what are you going to do about it? We have to, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. Theme, the root cause of evil, humiliation and the resultant resentment, bitterness, and desire for revenge. We've seen it with the witches and the Arunthi witch, the Rumfeld Runyon cried, so the no chestnuts for you, witch. We see it now with the murderers. This is the great, this is the greatest, um, clearest uh, statement of it. We see it with Macbeth. Um, I think Macbeth has been humiliated his whole life, sexually it seems, probably with his own parents, mother and father. I don't know if he has any brothers. That would be interesting too, because very often the younger brother, if they are the runt of the litter, and in the film version that I'm talking about, they make Ian McKellen look a lot shorter than the other guys around him. They film him so that when he comes in the room, he's he's down here and everybody else is up here. So there's that that runt of the litter thing that makes people. Uh, Richard the Third, the play, it's the same kind of thing. He was born a hunchback, and so he was ugly, and everybody bullied him and hated him when he was growing up, and he was a freak and everything else. And so what does he do? Burn it to the ground, baby. Uh, that's nihilism. Uh, murderous and suicidal nihilism for this poor guy. I'll do anything to see it burn or get rid of my own life. I really To fix my own life or to get rid of it. I don't really care. Well, uh, I haven't read anything about the, uh, uh, the Columbine massacres and every couple of years there's another school shooting or whatever, but the psychology of those guys is pretty much being depicted here. It's a Joker theme. That's the Joker. Um, I think uh, the filmmakers of the Joker, under, they probably were very, very familiar with uh, this play, Macbeth. It's their job to know it um, and to, and I think they, they built, they didn't copy from Shakespeare here, but they're, 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 they're in, it's the same line, it's the same kind of theme being expressed. And the Joker gives no easy answers either. What do we do? Have sympathy for the Joker? Good God, look what, he, look what he's going to do. We know he's a suicidal, murderous maniac. But there's the sympathy. I really don't know. It's, 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 part, of the, it's part of our problem. Uh, both of you know Banquo was your enemy. So the bold statement, yes, Banquo was your enemy. And so Banquo is mine. Uh, every minute that he's alive makes me more, puts me more in danger. Uh, and this is again, this is this weird thing. Is is a king explaining himself to these scumbags? Why on earth would he do that? But he says here, oh, I could just snap my fingers and have him gotten rid of, but I can't because we have because of politics. We both share certain friends, and if everybody knows that I killed Banquo, then I'm going to lose these friends, and that's not a good political thing to do. So here's appearance versus reality. He says, I have to. I have to cry when Banquo dies, as if I actually felt, um, uh, as if I actually felt love for him. So there's the appearance versus reality: the snake, uh, the serpent, and the flower, daggers and men smiles. Politics back channels to maintain appearances. Of politics for sundry weighty reasons, political reasons. We'll do what you command us. And then this guy starts to say something, but Macbeth cuts him off and says, "Your spirit shine through you." kind of ironic that all this dark imagery and then we get this light imagery coming from the murderers so that's there's some irony there uh within this hour at most i will advise you so where to go where to plant yourselves uh what you're supposed to what time you're supposed to do it and what moment i'll tell you all this kind of stuff and by the way so he adds it as a by the way because i think it breaks macbeth's heart to say this as well um by the way to leave no rubs and botches in the work, kill Fleance, his son, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's. They must, they must be killed as well. Uh, oh, maybe it doesn't, yeah. Plot, Fleance must die. Manhood, theme, obsession with Banquo's seed. There you go. Okay, 
We are resolved, my lord. Good, I'll call upon you straight. Go in and wait for me. Now here he adds, it is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. You, you've, you've probably noticed the way they end. They end with a couplet. It's a rhyming couplet, two lines that rhyme, flight, night. Uh, all of this was not. This is all blank verse. And blank verse, you might have heard that before. Uh, it's iambic pentameter. I, and iamb is a rhythm like this. Ta-tum, 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 ta-tum. So that's five iams, five beats. Ta-tum, 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 ta-tum. And that's the way Shakespeare wrote. Uh, probably 75% of this whole play, by the way, is written like that. 75% of it is going to be to tum to tum to tum to tum to tum. It's not 100% because that would sound like Google algorithms wrote it, which it could, but it would sound horrible. So all poetry is based on a certain counting of of beats, uh, but uh, then there's variation. So let's just let, let's just for fun let's hear this. It is concluded. It is concluded. Banquo thy soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. So there you go, five and five, and it rhymes at the end, so the rhyming couplet. Iambic pentameter. Pent means five. Meter means meter. Pentameter, pentameter. So there you go. It's actually kind of it's actually kind of neat, and once you start to see it, uh, you, you, it's not so hard. This is stuff that teachers want you to want you to remember for tests and stuff like that. The, the problem that I had when I was a student is that your teacher tells you to find it and to find out what meter it is and you can't because there's lots of variation and very often the first lines will come in stronger or something so it doesn't have that to tum to tum to tum it has a different rhythm and so it screws you right up but just read a couple of lines and try to find a simple line like these are pretty simple try to find a few simple ones and then you'll get the sense of it and they're always about this long too so you see they're all about the same length but these ones might not be perfect iambic pentameters but anyway so that's just a little side thing I, I'm, I might do another video i definitely will do another video on poetic devices and how to and we'll analyze shorter poems and uh we'll we'll, we'll i'll show you how to talk about them uh anyway that's the end of act two act three scene two